I graduated college in 2019 and that is when I first started my job as a software engineer over at Google. It's crazy to think that it's already been five years that I've been in the industry working as a professional software engineer in my full-time day job. And I definitely have to say over the past five years, I've changed and matured and learned a lot as a developer. And I wanted to make a quick video about the five ways that I have leveled up as a developer in the past five years. For the past five years, I've been working my day job as a full-time software engineer for big tech companies, originally at Google and now I'm at a different tech company up in Silicon Valley. But then outside of my day job in tech, I also code and build a lot of my own personal projects as well. Over the past two years, I've probably launched around seven different products or so. And right now my latest product that I'm building is called perfectinterview.ai. And by having these two very different engineering experiences, it gives me an interesting perspective about some lessons I've learned about working in big tech, as well as some lessons I've learned while building my own projects as well. So I think that this video, as I go over the next five things that I've learned over the past five years, it gives me a good perspective on both ends of the spectrum of working in tech. Also, if you want to skip around, I'll include some timestamps down below in the description so you can skip around to certain topics that you're interested in. The very first way that I have leveled up as a software engineer is by figuring out what type of engineer that I want to be. There's a lot of different types of software engineers out there. There are some people who are obsessed with technical complexity. These are the people that love to solve any type of challenging problem. They don't care what the product they're working on. All they care about is the fact that it is challenging and it is technical and they want to dive into it. And then there's also some people who are on the opposite end of the spectrum where they do not care at all about the technical complexity and all they care about is a product that they're building and that it is a product that they themselves use as well. I like to call those people product engineers and that is what I personally identify myself as. And I've come to realize I don't care all that much about the nitty gritty technical details of, oh, should we use this text type? Should we use this language? I don't know. And I also don't really care too much about the infrastructure of how to deploy the code and how everything runs. Whereas other people that are like very infra heavy, they're like, dude, I don't care about the product. I just want to make sure everything runs smoothly. I'm going to be handling all the deployments. I'm going to make sure everything is alive. I'm going to make sure nothing dies on us and everything is healthy. That is what they care about. And for me as a product engineer, at least earlier on in my career, I felt really guilty about not caring about these deep technical stuff like the infrastructure, the tech stack, the language, and not being so opinionated about that. I was like, am I less of an engineer because I don't care about that? No, that's okay. I know that my competitive edge and my interest in engineering is building the product and by embracing my identity as the product engineer it provides me with so much less guilt on a day-to-day -day basis where i'm like oh my god i'm not an idiot because i don't care about like the tech stack or the infrastructure i'm just a different type of engineer and that's totally okay a little bit of a side note but i always feel like every software engineer in the world has some phase where they're like yeah i think this is a year i want to work on more infrastructure stuff i think that's going to be super important i know that i did i always just feel like infra engineers are every engineer's favorite engineer they're the unsung heroes in the background making sure the application is running smoothly. And I always looked up to those people. They are the most gangster engineers in my opinion, but I've realized and come to the conclusion that that's not me. I'm a product engineer, I embrace it. And that has allowed me to grow a lot more as an engineer once I figured out what I love about the engineering and building process. The second thing that I have done to help me level up as a developer is to not learn new technology. I know that sounds a little bit counterintuitive at first. It's like, aren't you supposed to learn technology? Aren't you supposed to stay up to date? Yes, you should. But at the same time, there is also something to be said about not jumping onto the next hype bandwagon about the next crazy game changing tech stack that will make you a 10x developer. Whenever I would go out and build my own personal projects and my own applications, as a part of the building process, I would always try to learn a new tech stack and that just made for a horrible building experience because learning a new technology and building with it is gonna make you ship code and ship product and features way, way slower compared to if you just go to a tech stack that you're super comfortable with. And I've come to the point in my career where I know the tech stack that I like. I know the tech stack that I'm comfortable with. And once again, going back to my previous point about me embracing my identity as a product engineer, I'm finally like, dude, I don't have to learn the latest crazy framework. I can just embrace my existing frameworks that I've been using because it helps me ship code fast. And I think that developing that depth in a particular technology is super important as you get more senior in your engineering career as well. Yes, it is important to be a bit of a generalist at times, but I personally believe, especially if you are working in the big tech space, that depth is really important the more and more senior that you get. So I've learned to resist the hype trend of all the developer influencers where they're like, this will make you a 10X engineer. This is gonna change development. All right, that's cool. I'm gonna stick to my existing tech stack that I've been using for the past two years because I'm gonna ignore all of that 
that noise for now. All right, so the third way that I have leveled up as a software engineer is by embracing a zero configuration life. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you look back in my earlier days of software engineering, or even when I was in college and learning how to code, I used to spend so much time making my Vim configuration, my VS Code configuration, my Alfred keyboard shortcuts in hopes of these tiny milliseconds of speed improvements will make me a better developer. But no, that's not the case. You gotta realize that Vim configs, VS Code configs, Alfred configurations, your Notion third brain system, that is a hobby. Will it make you a little bit more productive? Yes, but will it be the make or break thing that turns you into a 10X engineer? No, probably not. It's a hobby and it's okay. You gotta just embrace that. Like I totally get why it's fun to customize Vim. I get why it's fun to handle all of your plugins there, managing your VS Code plugins. I totally get it. But for me, strictly in terms of being a better developer and leveling up in my coding expertise, I don't wanna focus on any of that. I have embraced the life of zero configuration. You just install something and it works out of the box. That's why I personally migrated from VS Code over to JetBrains because JetBrains works out of the box. No config necessary, it just works. I removed a lot of unnecessary software I used to have on my Mac. I removed a lot of my external monitors because it's just required extra configuration. I've essentially just gotten rid of anything that has been a remote distraction from my coding. And by doing so, all I have on my laptop open at a time is my code editor and my browser, that's it. And this lets me get into those deeper focus sessions a lot more easily compared to when I had like 15 different windows and macros and windows opened up. It was just like a mess. It was too much room for distraction. I made an entire video about this right here if you wanna check it out. I feel like oftentimes as engineers, we look to fix things oftentimes that aren't broken because it is just a small micro optimization. Sometimes they're important, don't get me wrong, but I also feel like a lot of the micro optimizations that we do is what I like to call fake work. It's stuff that feels like we're developing, feels like we're programming, it feels like we're being productive, but the reward is not worth the effort. Like the juice is not worth the squeeze a lot of the time. At least for me, I think I wasted a lot of time doing it. The fourth way that I have leveled up as a software engineer is by realizing that just because you can build something doesn't mean you have to. As I become more senior as an engineer, whenever someone would come to me with a feature request or a bug fix request, I'm always like, yeah, okay, I can do it. Theoretically, in my mind, I know how to do it. But just because I know how to do something doesn't mean that I have to be the one doing something. I can instead delegate that task to somebody else. And that is what is important, especially if you're working at a bigger company where you have a team of other engineers with you, you do not have to be the main character. You don't have to be the one, the hero going in, fighting all the bad guys, solving every single bug and feature request that comes your way. No, you have coworkers, you have teammates that you can delegate the work off to hand it off to as well. So I have really learned to trust my other engineers on my team being like, bro, I don't have to do everything. Like, this is why you have teammates, you know? And then number five, which is kind of similar to the previous point, is the fact that as a developer, I've really become a lot better at prioritization. I find that a big sign of a senior engineer is they can prioritize what to do and what not to do a lot better. If someone would ask me to do a task or a feature request or a bug fix, I'd be like, yeah, 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 I can do it. Just send me the details, I'll, I'll handle it, no worries. I got you, homie. But the more senior you get, the more requests that you're gonna get because you're kind of like the go-to person for a certain domain, product, or tech space. But as a more senior engineer, I am learning to say no a lot more times than saying yes because prioritization is super important. Probably the best way to prioritize anything is to have a data-driven approach where you track certain metrics, you track certain data, Data. You run a couple SQL queries on everything and see what is the data telling me? What is the story the data is telling me? So then that can provide me with a more informed decision of what I should work on next, what feature I should build next. I've invested a lot more into developing my SQL skills and my data querying skills. That's probably been one of the most useful technical skills that I've developed over the years, just to be a lot more confident poking around databases, performing more complex SQL queries to get useful information, to get data to tell a story and guiding me on what to prioritize and what to build next. This is a bit harder when you're building your own product, especially in the early stages when you don't have much data to work with. In that scenario, yes, your gut is all that you can work with. But the minute you start getting data, it's super important to start tracking that data, tracking your customer, you're tracking your user behavior, seeing how they are interacting with your application to make sure that you are building the best product for them and that you're not providing a shitty experience for them. That is really, really important. And that's not to say that trusting your gut is bad. There are definitely times where you should trust your gut, but I think if you can have some data to supplement your gut driven decision, that's super helpful. So those are five ways that I have leveled up as a software engineer in the past five years. The past five years has gone by so incredibly quickly, but I'm super excited for the next five years and the many, many years of coding afterwards because I have come to the realization that I fucking love coding and I don't wanna stop.